Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. It is time to do a book haul revisit where I look back at the books that I brought into my library in July of 2019 and July of 2020. Basically what I do in book haul revisits is I look at the books that I brought in and see how many of them I have read, how many of them I still need to read, see if there are any that I unhauled. And one reason I like doing this is that for me at least, it gives me a sense of whether or not I've read these books and it helps me be a more intentional book purchaser and think about how I bring books into my library in the future. But also it gives me an opportunity to look back and think about whether or not these books are still something I want to get to. I don't always end up deciding to unhaul a book. In fact, that is kind of rare as a result, but it is a piece of the intention here. And in fact, in this book I'll revisit, there will be several books that have already been removed from my library, and we'll get to those. I am going to do the 2019 book haul revisit first, and then we'll do the 2021. I will link both of the original book hauls in the description box down below if you'd like to check them out. In my revisits, I don't spend a lot of time talking about the plot of the books or anything like that. So if you are looking for that sort of information, I encourage you to check out the original book haul because I do talk about that in those videos. As I said, we're going to start with the 2019 book haul. There were nine books in that. The first one was Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. I got a used copy of this, and I have not gotten around to reading it. This is something that is perpetually on my radar, and I just haven't gotten around to yet. But I, it is absolutely a book that I still want to read. It is a sort of lesbian classic, and I very much want to read it. I am kind of hoping that I will get to it by the end of this year, but I don't know if I will. If not, I think there's a good chance it will be on my LGBTQ reading list or pile of hopefuls for June of next year if I haven't gotten to it by then. This is absolutely something I still want to read. I'm happy to continue to have in my library until I get to it because getting to it is something I feel like I very much want to do. The next book is a little less certain. It's An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. I purchased this because I had been thinking that I really wanted to read a lot more books by Roxane Gay, and that holds true. The only one of hers that I have read so far was Hunger, which is a memoir. This is a fictional book by hers, and part of why I haven't gotten to it is that the subject matter sounds extremely difficult. And I've heard a lot of really good things about the book, but a lot of the people who have read it talk about how the subject matter is pretty harrowing. And if you're familiar with the premise of the book, you understand exactly why. It deals with kidnapping, sexual assault, things like that. In hindsight, this is probably something I would be more likely to do on audio. I don't really know if or when I would get around to this print version that I have. However, I do want to read more of Roxane Gay's books, and I think it would be interesting to try fiction. I can't remember if she has any other fictional books. I think this is the only one so far which would make it certainly stand out for that. So I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm not going to do anything drastic like that. It is something that I will keep and continue to have in my library, but there is a high likelihood that if I do get to this book, it will probably be on audio at some point. And this is probably one of those examples where I believe this was an impulse purchase. I was in a store, I saw it and thought, oh, I, I would like to read her fiction book. I'll just pick that up. And in hindsight, I could have been a little more intentional about that and thought it through a little more. And it's not really surprising that two years later, it's still sitting on my shelf waiting to be read. So we'll see what happens with this book. Then we get to the first book that was unhauled, Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison. I purchased this from my library, so it only cost a dollar. Part of me wrestled with the idea about whether or not I should keep it on my shelf or get rid of it, and I think, again, the likelihood is that I'm much more likely to do this on audio. There's also a premium on space at the beginning of the alphabet on my bookshelves, which is why there was a much more urgent need to make some tough decisions on this bookshelf than there was for, say, An Untamed State. And I think this is something that I'm much more likely to either not get to for a really long time or do on audio. I know a lot of people were a little bit upset that I did unhaul Bastard Out of Carolina because there are a lot of people who are fans of it out there. I feel like because it is also something with difficult subject matter, and I've heard mixed things about it, it's something that I feel like I didn't necessarily need to keep shelf space for. I would still be curious to read it, 
but I haven't gotten around to it and I don't know when I ever would. I do feel like I'd probably be more likely to get to this than Bastard Out of Carolina, but that's total guesswork, so who knows. At the end of the day, like I said, I have a really big need for space at the beginning of the alphabet, and I think the likelihood that I was ever going to get to Bastard Out of Carolina anytime soon was really low, so I made a tough call. Maybe it was a mistake, maybe not, but it's a decision that I made. And that takes us to Happiness by Amanata Forna. This was talked about a lot on BookTube two years ago, and I have not seen anybody talk about it since that I can remember. It really seems to have faded from the conversation very quickly. However, at the time, a lot of people were talking about it. A lot of people were enjoying it. I believe this went pretty far in the BookTube Prize in 2019 as well. I can't remember for sure. But a couple of people, including Doris from Aldi Books, and I think Sean the Book Maniac, had talked about it and how much they enjoyed it. I could be wrong with that. I'm pretty sure Doris liked it. I can't. I could be wrong about Sean, though. And I saw this at my library, and hardcovers are $2 at my library when they're used. So I snapped it up because I was really surprised that they had a copy at that point. So because I got it cheaply, I'm not too concerned with this book. And again, things in the F and G area of my shelves are not too desperate. I'm not really crying out for space there. I feel like I can allow this to sit for a while, but my interest in reading it has definitely gone down. I honestly don't even really remember what it was about, and the premise of it sounded very contrived to me. I do remember that, but because it had gotten so much feedback, I picked it up. So this is probably a prime candidate for an unhaul once I do need space in this area on my shelves. Because if it came down to it, I'd be more likely to get rid of happiness than I would an untamed state. But I welcome your feedback. If you want to make a case that I should keep this book, let me know. Because as it is right now, I am not going to get rid of it. But as soon as I do need space, it would be a prime candidate for it on haul. So convince me I should keep it in the comment section down below. That is your task, should you choose to accept it. Then we get to another unhaul. It's Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. I did not actually get very far into this book. There had been complaints from a couple of different people on BookTube about aspects of the book, particularly Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me. And as soon as I got into the book, I saw how all of those seemed very accurate and true, and I bailed very hard and immediately brought it to my local used bookstore and traded it in, and I have never looked back. Basically, the premise of the book, and again, I'm not really going to talk about premises too much, but the premise of the book is part of why this ended up being an unhaul for me. It's supposed to be an exploration into the sexual lives of three women, and in that exploration, it is supposed to talk about their sexual agency and desires and how they shape their lives. However, in a lot of instances, it's not actually talking about the desire of the women. And interestingly, Lisa Tadeo does not seem to see the distinction. Like in the beginning, one of the things that was really bothering me is that it's not the sexual desire of the woman, it's the desire of the men around her and the ways in which they're being forced on her. And that would be fine if that's what Lisa Tadeo was talking about, but it's not. So I got rid of this book really quickly and again, have never looked back. Next, we have another unhaul. It's The Far Field by Maduri Vijay. This was something I had been really looking forward to and read as part of the Book 2 Prize in 2020, so the following year, and I just didn't like it. And in the latter part of 2020, I heard a couple of people complain about it. I believe Britta Bowler and Sean the Book Maniac again, but I could be wrong about that as well. And then I thought, well, I'm going to try it for myself and see what I think, and I just didn't like it. I think the decisions of the characters did not make sense in a way that was sort of maddening, the way the plot unfolds kind of depends on them making bad decisions a lot in ways that, again, don't really make sense. So I really didn't enjoy it and ended up putting it low in my ranking for the Book 2 Prize, and I believe it was eliminated after that round or pretty quickly in the round after that. Hazy on the details of that, but for me, there was no reason to keep this book around 
especially since it's a chunky book and it was taking up a lot of space on my shelf. And so given that I just didn't enjoy it, I didn't see any reason to continue having it on my shelf. So I got rid of it. And now we have another unhaul. It's Pervert by Remy Boydell. This is a graphic novel. I read this and I liked aspects of it, but I also felt like it keeps you at a deliberate remove. So while there are aspects of it that I liked, it also felt like kind of nothing after I finished reading it. This was something that was described as a really honest and touching portrait of a trans girl surviving through sex work. But while it is honest, I didn't find it touching because I feel like it deliberately keeps the reader at a remove and it doesn't really want to let you get very close. And I understand why, but it's hard to get over that as well. And I think the way in which the book is structured is designed not to really let you in, if that makes sense. So while I appreciated a lot of what it did, I just didn't really love it. And again, because at the beginning of the alphabet, there's a premium on space. I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of interest in keeping this book around just to have it on my shelf after I read it and didn't enjoy it all that much. So it's not that I didn't like it, but I also didn't enjoy it. And I felt like I could better use this space for something else. So this is no longer on my bookshelves and it's a bit of a shame, but there it is. Next, we have a book that I actually still have, House Made of Dawn by N. Scott Momaday. This is something that I purchased as part of my Pulitzer Prize project, especially since as I was in my local used bookstore, they have a discount section in the back corner and this was in it. That's where they put some like remainders and things they really urgently want to get rid of. So this was a dollar. How would I say no to that, especially since it is part of my Pulitzer Prize project. This was the first book by a Native American person to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. And it is absolutely something I would still like to get to. I am hoping that I will get to it shortly in my Pulitzer Prize project. I haven't made a whole lot of progress in that yet. And I'm kind of hoping I will ramp up on it over the next year. And this is one of the ones I'm most interested to get to because it does deal a lot with the Native American experience in this country. And I think that is going to be a fascinating book to read. It was published a long time ago as well. I can't remember what year it won the Pulitzer Prize, but it was published in 1966, or at least that's the copyright date. So I'm really looking forward to this book and I will absolutely continue to keep it on my shelf. And then the final book for the 2019 book haul for July is How We Fight for Our Lives by Syed Jones. I did read this book and I enjoyed it. I think it's a little bit uneven as a memoir, but I really enjoy Syed Jones. I do follow him on Twitter and I think he is a wonderful Twitter follow if you don't do that already. Although I thought this was a little uneven, I do like having it on my shelf. So I will probably continue to have it on my shelf. I don't think I'm gonna be in any mood to get rid of it anytime soon, but I did manage to read this. I enjoyed it for the most part and it will continue to be part of my library. So in the July 2019 book haul, there were nine books. It's tempting to say I read four, but in truth, it's more like three and a half or even three and a quarter because I did not get very far into Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. So the ones that I read were that little bit of Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, Pervert by Remy Boydell, How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones, and The Far Field by Maduri Vijay. And of these nine books, Four of them have been unhauled, one of which I didn't read, two of which I read and did not like, and one that I read and didn't really see much purpose in keeping it on my shelf. So let's move on to the July 2020 book haul. And this is a smaller book haul. You can see how over time, 2019 was my first full year on booktube, and I felt a lot of pressure to bring a lot of books into my library. I felt really excited to be on booktube and wanted lots of things to talk about. So. I went on a bit of a spending spree throughout the year and I really curtailed that in 2020 and that has kind of continued into this year, although there have been a couple of months this year when I've had larger book hauls and there were in 2020 as well. But this is definitely one of the months that is going to be a little bit smaller. So you can see how even without revisits for book hauls, I started to think a little bit more and be a little more intentional in stuff that I bring into my library, which is important to me because I don't have an unlimited budget for books. So I need to really think and consider about what I bring into my library and I'm willing to spend money on. So the first book that I hauled in July of 2020 is a little bit of a cheat, 
but I'm going to talk about it anyway. It's the cookbook that my husband made last year, My Mac and Cheese, a cookbook by Joel McClanahan. I helped him edit this last year because we were in lockdown. We couldn't really go out. It was 2020. You all know why. And this was the project that we worked on in those early days of the pandemic. And it really came together nicely. I'm very proud of the work he did on it. And if you want to check out more about it, there, it, there is always a link in the description box down below to his cookbook. And I just feel like mentioning it again because I'm really proud of what he did. And it's a cookbook, so it's weird to say I read it. But yes, I read this <laughs> several times over in the process of editing it, in fact. And it is absolutely something I will continue to keep on my shelves. So there you go. And then we have Olivia by Dorothy Strachey. This was something I brought into my library after hearing about it on somebody's channel. I don't remember whose. Possibly Sean the Book Maniac? Possibly somebody else's. It is a slim little thing. Is this even 100 pages, actually? Let's find out. It is 100 pages exactly. It's sort of a classic book. It's a bit of an LGBTQ book, and for that reason, it is something that will continue to be on my shelf. It's really not taking up a whole lot of space, and it is something that I am very curious to get around to at some point, even if that's a year or two from now, because it is sort of a seminal text. Let's see when this was published. Dorothy Strachey died in 1960. She was born in 1865, so that gives you a sense of the era in which this was published. 1949. So it's sort of a seminal text, and for that reason, I feel like it's worth keeping around on my shelf and getting to at some point. The next one is The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin. This is something that had been recommended by Matthew Sharapa. And I originally brought it into my library in July of 2020, thinking that I would get to it for Women in Translation Month, which is August. And I didn't. So this is on the docket for Women in Translation Month this year. But I have another book that I'll be talking about in this month's book haul that is also a candidate for that, and I'm probably more likely to read the other one. But if there's time to do two, I would certainly like to do this one. I've read two books by Kyung Suk Shin, Please Look After Mom and The Court Dancer, I believe was the other one, and I've enjoyed both of them. So I'm really looking forward to exploring her work a little bit further. This is something that I am happy to continue to have on my library until I get to it. Whenever that may be. Maybe this August, maybe next August, whatever. I'm happy to have it. Next is something I did actually read, and recently, Camp by L.C. Rosen. This was brought to my attention by Jen the Librarian, and I read it as part of my LGBTQ books in June for Pride Month this year, and really enjoyed it. Glad I got around to it. Glad I hauled it. Glad I continue to have it on my shelves, because I recommend this book. It's a lot of fun. It's a YA rom-com with gay protagonists. What's not to love? I really enjoyed it. The final book from my book haul for last year was The Cooking Gene, A Journey Through African American Culinary History in the Old South by Michael W. Twitty. This is a beautiful book, first of all, the cover, but also the way it is laid out inside is really pretty. Let me find the beginning of a chapter for you because the way they introduce chapters, I really enjoy those illustrations. And there are photos as well. It came to my attention because Michael Twitty was a guest in an episode of Padma Lakshmi's show, Taste the Nation, on Hulu. And he was so interesting that we immediately sought out his book. My husband did read this, and he liked it but didn't love it. And I'm really looking forward to getting to it at some point. In the meantime, I'm happy to have it in my library because I think he was just a fascinating person and I really look forward to getting to his book at some point. So there were five books from that book haul in July of 2020. I'm going to say that I've read two. One of them is, you know, it's a bit of a cheat because it's the cookbook my husband made, but hey, my channel, my rules. And no one hauls in that month. And again, it was a much smaller book haul as well. And maybe that's why there are less unhauls because I was definitely being much more intentional with purchases in July of 2020 than I was in July of 2019. So altogether, there are 14 books that I've purchased in the last two Julys. And of those, I've read five and a half, maybe five and a quarter, if we're being honest. Because again, I really didn't get very far into Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. So, again, if you'd like to make a case for any of these books on why I should get to it soon, 
keep it in my library, anything like that, let me know. If you have thoughts about anything else that I've talked about in this book haul or any of the books or recommendations based on any of these, please let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time. I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comment section down below. And as always, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.